Notion Formulas 2.0 allow you to define variables within a formula using the let or let's function. In this video, we are exploring exactly that with a simple example. We want to count the number of relations that we have in a specific database page. Here is a database that is called 24 assets and there are two relations to this database, assets and projects. And for this use case, we want to have a formula without using any rollups that outputs the number of projects and the number of assets related to this 24 asset, that is one asset in this case, so that we can see a quick count right here, also with some spacing in between. So I created a formula, it's called summary count, and let's see how it is structured right here. We're using the let's function that you can find among the list of functions in the Notion Formulas 2.0 editor. And let's allows you to define multiple variables and assign values to each variable that you define in your formula. Whereas the singular form that is let, like this, allows you to define one variable and one value and then directly the expression, as opposed to let's that takes multiple variables and values. So let's deconstruct this right here. First, I open a let's function, then the parenthesis, and I define the first variable that I wanna reuse then in my formula. In this case, we wanna count the number of projects related to this asset. So I wanna call that variable project number. And after the comma, I will assign a value to that variable so that it has a value that I can then reference later in my formula using the variable name. And the value is length projects. Project is a token that you can find in the property list of this database. And length is a function that counts the length of a list or of a word, the characters in a word. So in this case, because projects is a relation property, I know it's a list type or array type of property. So if I calculate the length of that list value, I get the number of projects associated with this asset, in this case, intellectual property, because a list is composed of multiple values. Then after the second comma in here, I am defining the second variable in my let formula. And the second variable is called asset number. And it follows the exact same principle as the first one, but this time it takes the length of the assets array or list property. Because you can see here, that's the relation property that we have. It's called assets. And in this case, we have three assets related to this intellectual property asset. And after that, I include the expression of the formula. So that's the last part of the let's function right here. That is what you wanna output in this formula after defining all the variables that we can then reuse throughout our formula, we can specify the output of the formula. In this case, that's a concatenation of text that says total projects, that is hard coded right here, plus project number. And that's the variable that we defined right above here. Plus we have two spaces, that's the notation for adding line breaks in the formula so that it displays nicely. Although in the preview, you will not see those. When you click done, you will see those right here. You can see there are two line breaks in between. Plus, so another concatenation, total assets that is hard coded again, plus asset number. And that is the second variable that we defined in our let's function. And in this case, you can see this nicely outputs the total projects, that is one total projects linked to this asset and three total assets related to this asset right here. If I add an additional project, just like that, the total projects count will increase by one and so on. Also, if I remove a project, so that's a dynamic value. And the benefit of using the let's or let function is that you can define variables that you can reuse multiple times within your formula hence reducing the amount of work that you will need to do. If, for example, in the future, 
you want to change the value associated with the variable, such as project number, for example, you can do that directly in the first part of the let's function, where you define the value of that variable. And that change will then cascade down to all the references that you make to that variable throughout the formula. And that's a way to keep things clean and avoid overhead of maintaining your code, so to speak, in the Notion Formulas 2.0 syntax. That is that for this video. If you have questions or comments, you can drop them down below. Thanks for watching for now and see you in the next one.